Well, welcome in. Special edition Chatterbox Clicker. We're going to do a little Pittsburgh Steelers preview tonight. Uh, talking about uh, Pittsburgh's offense, kind of what they're about. I think everybody understands what their defense is about. Right now, their defense is playing at a very, very high level. I think the defense is the reason that they are where they are. Um, again, they lost to Cleveland in Cleveland, but the defense was not the issue there. I think the offense was a little stagnant, but what you'll see is with uh, Cincinnati losing Burrow going against that stout defense, the defense for Cincinnati needs to step up and be able to shut down Pittsburgh's offense, which right now is is not running at a, at a, at a very high level, but it can. And there's some things that they have they have on offense that they can get going if they just you know get it going, obviously. But uh, let's take let's start taking a look at their offense. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about here is just the run game that they've got. And if you look at they've got Najee Harris and they've got Jalen Warren. Uh, Najee Harris here obviously is is one of their higher draft picks. If you watch here, a lot of this outside zone stuff. So they're they're running a lot of what. Uh, you know, you know, it's just it's just straight outside zone. And one of the things about outside zone is when you run outside zone, you like to stay on your track if possible. If not, you'd like to make a cut up. You don't really want to have to take this thing and, and bounce it around here. And you don't want to really have to cut these things back. You really want to be able to either go here or go here. And they do a good job of this. And again, you see here, he really never strays from that that path right there. And they do a good job of that with, with their offense. And now he's not a burner, obviously, but he's a good enough player to get things done. Another outside zone by Najee Harris. And, again, you can see this from the end zone. He's very He's got a lot of good ability to be able to jump over things like this. Pittsburgh's offensive line right now, they used to be built to do duo where they would double people off the ball. You, you know, when Le'Veon Bell was there, you'd see all kinds of, of double teams and – you know, you'd see all kinds of, of uh, just straight-ahead runs. But I think they're getting to where right now they're better at just running guys side to side and letting their backs make a cut. So you're going to see a little bit more um, outside zones. Now here's here's Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren, number 30 here. Um, kid's a good player, man. I mean, really is. Really shows a, a lot of uh, a lot of abilities faster than Najee Harris is. But you can see, again, he gets here, and then he's going to cut this thing up. And when he cuts it up, he gets vertical and he stays vertical. And, again, that's that's what these plays are made for. But this is something that the Bengals are going to have to be ready for. And if you watch what they're trying to do, they're trying to – you know, they're diving to people's ankles. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a mentality, I think, that Pittsburgh, over time, it's developed into this as opposed to being that uh, straightforward duo slash, uh, you know – uh, counters, pullers, those type of things. Now they toss this ball here to to Jalen Warren, and again, all this is is an outside zone. All this is an outside zone. They got an extra blocker with this receiver right here. But as you see here, you can't you can't get caught behind the center like this, or the you see you see how see how he ends up getting behind him. <clears throat> if you've got if you're in this gap, you got to hold your gap versus the out, these outside zone teams and. <clears throat> You'll see. I mean, they've been they've been pretty productive uh, with the outside zone schemes. Now, here's something that they they tried to kind of throw a, a little wrinkle in here is is kind of a, it's a trap. It's an influence trap here, and they're going to trap him and bring him up in here. And you know, it's not bad. And and again, it, it's it's something I think when you've got a, a a line that's not necessarily the the most physical line that they that they probably Pittsburgh's ever had, but you got a guy that can get in the way. You got a guy that can trip and fall and make a block here and not touch anybody. You just got to be in the right places. Again, it, go, it goes down to run fits. Now, this is something uh, – I, I like this play. This is this is interesting. So, this is kind of the same thought process that the Bengals have been running. They, they're, they're actually going to double here, back to here, back here, set in, and then they're going to bring this guy in for him. And it's like it's a one-back power extra – and 73 just doesn't get there in time, so 11 helps him out. And really, those two have these two, and you're running on him. That That's your unblocked guy back there. But as you can see, it's not – I mean, pretty good pretty good play. But, again, you're going to see the, these kind of things. You're not going to see a whole lot of straightforward downhill runs like you're used to seeing from Pittsburgh back when Le'Veon Bell was playing. Uh, looking right here – now, this is a uh, – 
kind of the same thought process here, just without the uh, extra, without the extra guy. But you're gonna see here, double back, pull around. And, but you watch this though. I mean, Najee Harris does a good job of of taking guys and taking them for a ride right here, and and, and you know again push them in there, push them in the end zone, and uh, boom. They got to be able to, you know, you got to be tough with this guy. This guy is a good, hard nosed runner, and he can get in the in the end zone when he needs to. Uh, one of the things that they're doing with uh, uh, with Warren is, if you look, this is third and one. So most of the time, when people line up like this on third and one, you're thinking probably, you know, the quarterback sneak. You're thinking like some dive play here, but right there, there's there's Jalen Warren right there, Najee Harris in the backfield back here. And instead of going downhill, they just hand it to him on a on a jet sweep coming around the edge here. And there's things that they do with him that's actually, um, you know, it's not your normal stuff you do with backs. You know, usually you're handing this off to a receiver going around the edge, but there's there's a a shot at them doing that from a, as a back at the at the wing position. Here's an inside zone. I just wanted to show you this is uh, what this guy can do. This is the type of athleticism this guy has. So he gets hit right here. I mean, obviously you'd like to see him get up in that 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 kind of crevice right in there, but he doesn't, and he spins off of this, and then he ends up out running the entire defense right here. So you're talking about really that should be a, a you know a two three yard loss right there to just outrun defense. And I know Tennessee's on uh, struggling a little bit this year on defense, but again, that's a, a good look at what they can do now. Uh, when you talk about the pass game, there's a couple of things you need to see here. And uh, Pickens is the guy that you kind of got to keep your eye on. And he's going to be anywhere on the field. And you can see here, this is a, a Tampa two. So they got really wide safeties. They're playing five underneath. And this guy's kind of playing right here. But they hit that little hole right there. And, they're you know, again, they're going to go to him. That's who they're going to. They're not going to – a lot of their other receivers, they're going to number 14. So, and again, you'll see here, uh, this right here is a uh, uh, slant behind a blitz. So their blitz, uh, Jacksonville is blitzing right here. So you're going to see this, they're blitzing. He's going to he's gonna run this little slant right behind them. Now, here's the thing that you got to be careful of is, okay, good, you beat the hot. Cool. You, you, your quarterback beat the hot. Now, you got to make these tackles in the open field. When you've got those kind of guys right there, you got to make tackle. At least keep him out of the end zone. Yeah, you got the first down. Keep him out of the end zone. And you can see right here. I mean, he's a he's a he's a pretty uh, athletic guy that can handle these kind of things. But again, I, you know, I'm not real sure what that kind of uh, technique is. I'm, I don't remember that being taught when I was in Jacksonville. But uh, that's uh, you know, Winnie right there. He's he was he played for us and. Uh, he was, a, he was a safety for us back when uh, I was there in Jacksonville as well. He's a good player. Now, here's what they got to be careful of. And, again, you want to talk about uh, Burrow and Chase, just Burrow and Chase. So, some quarterbacks and some receivers just have this feel, and it's this back shoulder. It's this back shoulder throw. And you'll see down here, I mean, that that, that to me is – so when, 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 you're, when your defender is on top of you and you're like this, you throw the ball back behind – if this defender were to stay back behind you and you were beating him, then you throw it over the top. And right here is a good field. Now he gets he gets uh, uh you know Kenny Pickett right here gets hit pretty good. You can't really see it, but he gets hit pretty good right there. But the fact that he got that throw off, and again they've got this down. Now this is not the same play. This is not the same play, but it's the same throw. And you can see right here again down at the bottom. He's gonna he's gonna come back here and then throw it right behind him. You can see it from the end, from the end zone better. I mean, they've got this throw down. So those are one of those things they're gonna have to be working on this during the week. Uh, one more here, and again, same. It might be the same pass route they just threw. Now, this one right here, you got a guy over the top. Now he is beating them, but you got to remember there was there's a guy over the top now. So should he throw it right there? Probably not, because then you know obviously that guy's gonna come in there. So he takes a. He takes a shot to try to throw it behind this corner and actually drops it in there, which is a pretty pretty damn good throw, uh, you know, catch by these two guys. You know, I mean, I don't know what else, you know, 37's kind of, you know, right there. I mean, he's doing everything he can, but 
they he caught that ball. So again, they just got to be ready for the back shoulder. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. Um, now the, the, the other thing that, that, uh, doesn't get talked about much is, uh, Kenny Pickett. And again, this is, uh, this is first and 10. I'm not real sure. Let me see what the time on the clock is here. Um, yeah, it's the end of this. This is like two minute drill, but you can see they're in an overloaded front. So they're, they're in their pass rush mode on, on Jacksonville side here. But again, that, that little rush lane in the middle opens up right here and they're playing a cover six. So they're playing cover two over here and they're playing quarters over here. And he just slips through the middle here. Now you've got this guy, sure, but he's a he's a decent runner. So again, you you got to just kind of you got to make sure your rush lanes don't get widened out like this because you know he will find a way to run out of that and uh, just got you know I'm not saying he's he's no, he's nothing like uh, you can throw him into the throw him right there into the bench. He's nothing like you know some of these other guys you're seeing Lamar Jackson and those kind of guys, but. Again, he he is able to do it. Again, here's another shot at it right here. And you know the best the best way to block a guy sometimes is run him off. So when you're playing man, you can see right here he's got him man. He's got him man. He's got him man. They're playing two man back here. They got two guys deep. And when you're playing two man, a lot of times you know you're not looking at the quarterback. And there he goes taking off. So. There are some things that, uh, you know, obviously you just got to be careful of. Now, their offensive line is susceptible to be giving up sacks, okay? So this is a full slide. And for some odd reason, they're full sliding this thing this way. Now, I, I get it. that Aaron Donald's not even on the field right now, which I'll talk about in a minute. But they're going to put the back on number 97 over here. That's not necessarily the best uh, matchup you're going to want and then I want to show you this from the end zone because this is kind of funny looking. But again, you, you know, you would think that they want a big guy here, big guy here, big guy here, big guy here, big guy here. Let the back then take like the the smaller linebacker types. But here they've, you know, they've said here, okay, now is, should this ball be out? Maybe should that ball be thrown right there? Maybe. I mean, I think you know there are some quarterbacks I think could make that throw right there. But again, watch watch ninety seven. Grab his hand, just hold his hand. I got you, man. So sometimes you're just holding their hand in the park. Bring them back to you. Give it. Don't go anywhere, man. Don't go anywhere. Come back. There you go. Go to the ground. So um, again, some of the the scheme stuff is maybe an issue, and some of it is uh, some of this right here. Now I want you to watch this. This guy right here is going to absolutely screw the running back. So when he sets. So there's a big guy right here. So, you know, that that's that's a big human being right there, 91. That's a smaller guy off the edge, 20. So when 91 comes in, 65 should take him because you've got help here. you got help here. His eyes are here. That back should come back over and block 20. Well, 65 sets way out here like he's setting for 20. Well, 30's got to stay in here and go – clean up right here and then all of a sudden here comes this guy off the edge so you know there are some things that are that are happening and you know obviously you know he does a pretty good job of getting out of this one but he doesn't get out of the out of the sack all the way so again with the with the Bengals and and some of the uh the blitzes and pressures they bring I think you can pressure this guy and pressure this offense um you know into giving up some sacks and then the last one I got here talk to you about it from this end um that's Aaron Donald. All right. So what they're doing here is they're, they're sliding their line. They, they want to get, you know, they want to get two guys. They want to get these two guys on Aaron Donald, which I understand. But again, you're leaving another big guy over here by himself. Cause they're going to be here. He's here. These, these guys are all turning here. The back doesn't even go back on this one. So I'm not a hundred percent sure what they were thinking on this, if this was just a miscommunication, I get the whole fact that you got to take care of that guy. I, I understand that I've lived through that world. Um, but now you got two legit rusher, big guy rushers on one guy. And again, I think you can, uh, you can get some situations where you can get them into those things. And, uh, offensively, I mean, obviously they're struggling a little bit, but you, you know, you just gotta, you, but you can't take it for granted. You got to go in there with a plan to say, we're going to shut them all the way down. Just shut them down. 
Um, and that's that's one of those things that uh, Lou Anarumo, I know he's going to have time to, to look this over and he's going to have time to get it done. Um, but, you know, again, they just got to get it done. Now moving on to the defense. Defensively, these guys are a 3-4 team. They've got those outside backers. They've got um, Highsmith and they've got T.J. Watt. I think you guys have all heard about them. Uh, they are some really, really solid players. Obviously, the thing that they, the thing that the Bengals have got to take advantage of is the stuff on this back end. The back end is not as strong as it used to be. These they used to have some uh, uh, all pros all on the back end of of their defense. Well, that's not necessarily the case right now. So if you look at the run game right here, now this is some straightforward just inside zone stuff. Now this is Derrick Henry, but I think this is something that Joe Mixon can do. And again, you're going to see a lot of these guys are bouncing around off of guys, and they're very, very aggressive at the linebacker position. They're very aggressive. Watch, watch, just keep your eye on these on these linebackers as we're watching this. Very aggressive. Here's a linebacker mugged up in the line right here. And again, they're very aggressive, but that that the problem when you're aggressive like this is sometimes you run yourself out of a gap and then you you give yourself a gap. So there are some things to be had that way. Uh inside zone and duo. Okay, now this is this I believe this is just inside zone, but you can think of this as being duo. I think uh my man went a little too far here. I don't think he was supposed to go that far over. You can see he kind of runs into runs into Derrick Henry. I don't think he was supposed to go over that far. That's what I'm saying, it's inside zone, but Inside zone, duos, anything that's going pretty much straight forward on these guys uh, is, is probably a good thing because these guys can move, man. I'm just going to tell you, you, you watch these these linebackers. They are aggressive. Um, they're, they're a lot better than I think they're giving credit for, and I think they're a reason that um, Pittsburgh's defense is playing so well. But, again, when you go straight forward, sometimes you just kind of get lost in there, and then you know that's a that's a big back. He doesn't just get lost. And again, I think that's something Joe Mixon can do. Everybody's everybody's jumping Joe Mixon about getting getting tackled by his ankles. Where there's there, there's King Henry right there getting tackled by his ankles too. So it happens to the best of them. Uh, now this is a play right here that um, the uh, the Bengals have been running. It's it's that kick play. So now they don't have anybody right here. I'm not sure what's. You know, it's it, again. What's the uh, what's the down and distance right here? Let's see here. This is uh, second and four. Well, they don't have anybody in that bubble right there, which is which is fine. So what what the Jaguars are going to do is they're just going to step down. They're just going to block everybody. Block back. They're all blocking back for that guy. He's pulling and kicking right here. He's going to go block here. It's the same play that uh, that the Bengals have been running. Same exact play. So you think that you know that you know, I guarantee you that play is going to show up. And again, there's Travis Etienne tripping over uh, tripping over a receiver. You know, happens to the best of them. Uh, now looking at tackles for loss. So when you're watching these guys, just watch this guy from way back here. They're going to run a. They're going to pull both of these guys around. I want you to watch how fast this guy goes from here to here. I mean, there's zero hesitation. Bam, takes on that takes on that puller right there. You know, frees up frees up his guys here, but and not only does he take him on, he makes the tackle. So again, the linebackers are a, are a very very integral part of this defense right now and they're very aggressive. They're not the the slow play linebackers that some of these other teams have had. All right, now with the pin and pull things, so this is just a pin and pull. So they're blocking here, pulling here, blocking. But I want you to watch the pursuit and the aggressiveness of the pursuit of Pittsburgh's defense. They've got to be ready for that. That's something right there. I mean, that's that is that's as high level of pursuit as you're going to find uh, at any level right there. So, um, you know, again, it, this is the aggressive nature of this Pittsburgh defense. I think they're more aggressive right now than I, even when I was coaching back in, when they had all the big names – playing for him. I think these guys are, are, as, are as good as you've seen uh, defensively from Pittsburgh. Uh, now, sacks. I want you to watch the amount of movement they have right here. So they're going to bring these two guys in here. Now, 55 is going to kind of uh, – he's going to kind of hang there, and then he's going to come around right here. And you've got 31 running around over here. There's just a lot of, a lot of movement. And see, he even comes all the way around 57. So you just got to be able to like it. There's a point where you got to build a wall, and it's kind of they're almost getting there where they're doing it. They're almost building it. 
but you can see just all the movement finally gave out and, you know, Stafford's got to get rid of this ball at some point. But again, those, those kind of pick games, the movement, the aggressiveness, um, those are the kind of things that you're going to see a lot of, uh, come, come Sunday. Now this is a, this is a three-step pass here. This, this, again, uh, they're cutting right here as you'll see, you'll see right there. They're, they're cutting. So anytime you see tackles cut, this ball is supposed to be gone. This ball is supposed to be thrown to somebody right now. Well, he feels like right now he can't throw that. He feels like right now he he doesn't have anything to throw to. Well, when you cut, when you cut like this, you're done. Your your block is over. Now, yeah, they got him down, and your back is there to pick him up. Now, these guys could do a better job of holding him off. But, again, that's why 56 is just standing there. Heisman just standing there like – Okay, cool. Um, got got my sack, but that's that's the reason this ball should be this ball's supposed to be thrown right now because it's supposed to get out. That's that's you know, it's it's quick cut protection right there. You got to get the ball out. Now T.J. Watt, I think everybody knows T.J. Watt, but again, he is going to dip and rip. He's going to spin. He's going to see he's one arm bowling like that, but then he's, he's one arm bowling to get you to put put your hands on him, and then he's going to dip and rip under you. And again, I mean that's a that's a turnstile right there, at right tackle. And I don't know what this little fake punch is. That that drives me crazy. This little fake punch. Oh, I just faked you out. Bam. Oh, nope. There you go. Go side quarterback. And then uh, this one again. I, I know. Bengals fans hate it when I'm, you know, talk good about somebody on the opposition. But TJ Watt gets his helmet knocked off, gets up, and still goes and makes the sack right here. So not only after he gets his, his right here, most most guys when when they get their helmet knocked off, they're probably stopping. Not this guy. It was like it was like it didn't even phase him, and he went and made the sack. Now I mean. You know, they got a penalty right there for uh, illegal hands. But, again, that's something you got to – it's the same It's the same thought of the move right there. Instead of the, instead of doing the dip and rip, he's doing the chop and run around right here. And, um, you know, again, you got a lot, of, a lot of pick games going on over here. So those are the things that they got to be ready for. It's movement. It's quickness off the ball. Um, those kind of things are going to show up. Now, there are some ways to hit these guys in the pass game. Now, I think this is busted coverage right here. Because right here that you, you you got a you got a guy running across the field, and it looks to me like they're supposed to be playing uh, three fire zone, and I don't know. There's not there's not a whole lot of underneath coverage. So if they're playing man or if they're playing three fire zone, either way, you're missing the dude right here. So um, you know some of those things can happen, and I think it's a busted coverage. But again, here's that slot fade that they're hitting. And those are the things that uh, you've seen. You've seen Chase been hit on these. You've seen uh, you've seen Higgins been hit on these. So again, you know this man or carry coverage. You know in cover three, this carry coverage that they do in their fire zones. They can you can beat them at that at that. They're not the greatest in coverage right now when it comes to that. Uh, now again, this is a, a shallow cross. And you can see here they're playing man, so he's going to chase him. And here he comes across over here, and there's a lot of speed on uh, on Cincinnati's team that you could get that as Chase or any of those guys, and just get them the ball and let them run. Now, I want you to watch watch my man Stafford here. And I was with him for two years in Detroit. I mean, watch him throw this ball. It's like, I mean, this dude's pretty unbelievable. I mean, really, honestly, this guy doesn't get enough credit for how good of a quarterback he is. But I mean, I know he—I know he's a great quarterback. He won a Super Bowl finally, but I mean, this guy can do some crazy throws. Everybody gives Mahomes all that credit, man. I'm telling you, Stafford might have been one of the first ones to do it. Um, now we're looking at this is a linebacker right here, okay? And this is DeAndre Hopkins. Somehow or another. They decided to run a zone coverage where you put a linebacker on De, on DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not 100% sure why you'd put anybody on Hopkins like that, but um, but you got a linebacker playing Hopkins right there. So I maybe they'll do that with, with the Bengals. Maybe you'll have Chase right there and he'll be on number 55. Uh, God bless him if you do. Um, heck of a throw here. 
you know, but again, when you get your best player matched up on a linebacker like that, you got to take advantage of it. Um, now this is a bad, I think this is a bad read by this guy right here. Now, again, if you, if you look at who's who on the field right now, that's Travis ETN. So that's the running back. But if anybody knows anything about ETN, uh, ETN is a, uh, is a really, really athletic running back that could play receiver, honestly, but they're playing a cover two look here and he takes this angle. He should take the angle here knowing that he's underneath. Well, he runs right past him and ends up being a big play. So, uh, you know, again, I think there's some things in the secondary that they're not necessarily uh, on the same page with that, that can be taken advantage of. Uh, and then the last thing I've got here, this is uh, what I call tricky two. And uh, this is a Terrell Austin uh, thing. You know, he's been doing this for a while. But if you look at this, if you look at this, it looks like they're playing cover two here and they're going to play quarters over here. But what they end up doing is they end up rotating him to the deep half, him down in, him out. So it ends up looking like this. And it still ends up being two. But it's 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 like a tricky way to get to it. So in, instead of your normal, he's here, he's here, he's down here, he's here. They're going here, here, back, back. So um, those are one of those things. You know, if you know they're doing it, you can find spots in, in in there because they're they're you got guys going to different spots from different areas. And then if you can get your guy right in that area, just like Green Bay does, uh, you can take advantage of it. So. Again, I think there's some things in the secondary that that uh, you can take advantage of versus Pittsburgh, and none of this stuff that I've spoken about has been uh, takes you know an elite quarterback. I, I think any of the quarterbacks that are on the team right now with uh, with Cincinnati, including AJ McCarron, Browning, those guys can make these plays. There's nothing that I showed right here that's that's a that was uh, effective against Pittsburgh. None of that stuff has to have like an elite quarterback. Yeah, I talked about Stafford making that throw and those kind of things, but none of this stuff takes that. And again, as as long as they can find a game plan that fits the quarterback that's playing offensively and defensively, just make plays and stop their offense. Make make them have to beat you more with the pass than the run. Stop the run. If you can stop the run and make them beat you with the pass, uh, you'll probably have a good day uh, defensively. So. Again, uh, you know, keys to the game, I would say offensively, uh, your key to the game is, is really just is the game plan. It's, it's putting something together where you can uh, methodically move the ball down the field, including the run game, but don't make the quarterback that's playing do anything more than he needs to do. Just let him take advantage of the players he has on the field right there because there's a ton of talent on the field. I think that's the main key for the offense. Defensively, again, like I just said, I think they just got to stop the run. They got to go up there, stop the run, uh, make make them beat you with the pass, and then and then go after them and take take your rushers and go go rush the quarterback. And you know, on the other side, I guess another offensive key could also be slow down the pass rush, and that would be you know being able to run the ball, but having an answer for those edge guys and. Uh, and Highsmith and T.J. Watt and being able to slow those guys down. Well, I appreciate y'all coming in for the uh, the Pittsburgh preview show. And uh, we will be back on Tuesday uh, after Pittsburgh game uh, to recap the game. That will be at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday. And we will see 5.30 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And we will see you guys then. Appreciate you uh, coming in for Chatterbox Clicker. See you later.